Hello and welcome to In the Hyperloop. My name is Blake. Today we're going to talk about leak testing. Leak testing is pretty complex, but the simple version of it is if you have a bicycle tire with a puncture, you put the tire underneath water and you see where the little bubbles are coming from. That's leak testing. But in more complex systems, it can involve a lot more. Not only do you have to know if you're leaking, but you also then have to figure out where it is happening. Leak testing goes in many different industries, including pharmaceutical implants, automotive gas tanks, automotive hybrid batteries, HVAC refrigeration, mass spectrometers, compressors, heat pumps, evaporators, building sprinkler systems, inkjet cartridges, sensors, nuclear fuel rods, the list goes on. But this technology is also used in the Hyperloop industry for both tubes and for pods. One global industry leader for leak testing is called NOLEC. NOLEC has been around since the 1970s, and they create systems for leak testing, detection, proof of testing instruments, and they develop, apply, and manufacture custom leak testing equipment in Sweden and Malaysia. This equipment can be placed at the end of a manufacturing line or in a subassembly. They also assist in customers in product development as well as to assure that their product meets specific leak testing requirements. So NOLEC is a total service provider meaning they help companies design, assemble, site test, train staff, and maintain all of their equipment. So hi Norbert, and welcome to In the Hyperloop. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Thanks Blake, thanks for having me. So I mentioned in the, in the introduction, you're with uh, NOLEC, and you're a managing director for a company that does leak testing, leak detection, proof of testing. Can you tell me a little bit more about NOLEC and how your role fits into the mission? Sure, yeah, NOLEC is a, uh, it's a Swedish company. It was started in, uh, in the early 70s in Sweden. And from there, we've kind of expanded and grown into a, uh, an international company. So our primary focus is, uh, like you said, on leak testing, uh, proof testing, uh, leak detection, and then we actually do that, uh, that that globally. So my own role, I actually started 12 years ago. I started the U.S. entity for uh, for Nolec, uh, which was the first international expansion, and now we also have offices in uh, in Malaysia, in uh, Denmark, uh, in Hungary, and we're actually in the process of opening up an office in China as well. So how did how did you get involved in leak testing or this industry? Well, it's actually it's closely related to the to the vacuum industry, and that's uh, how I kind of got started with it. My background is actually in in sales and marketing, but um, one of the early positions I got, I was lucky enough to uh, to get into a company that had a sales traineeship program, which allowed you to get into uh, say different departments. Uh, part of it was customer service, part of it, part of it was uh, the repair department, uh, tagging along with other sales guys. So that's kind of how I got started in the in the industry. Oh, cool. That's that's actually kind of nice to have that kind of a lead into the industry as a, as kind of from a student perspective. So what is leak testing? Well, leak testing it's quite quite generic. If you actually do a search, say on Google for leak testing, the primary leak testing that you come across is, for example, with plumbers and and uh, swimming pool leak testing, but that's not the kind of leak testing that we we do. So the leak testing that we do is we don't actually do the leak testing, but uh, we supply equipment to end users to leak test their their product. So it's more an industrial leak testing. So for example, uh, say take a, a car, there's many uh, components in a car that have to be leak tested. So take for example, a fuel tank. Uh, a company will approach us and say, we have to leak test the fuel tank. They'll let us know what their specifications are as far as say leak rate, cycle time, what other things they need to do in the process. And then we develop a machine around their, uh, their specifications. And what kind of challenges are there when you design these devices? A big thing nowadays, of course, is, is time constraints. So we have to design a machine that fits into the production environment that the customer has. So sometimes it can be a very manual system if it's more, you know, starting up, ramping up production or more like an R&D type application. Uh, some applications are offline testing where there can be a say an assembly line, and then the, the parts taken to the leak test machine, tested, and then put back into, into uh, production. Or a lot of times is actually nowadays part of a completely automated production line. Kind of all of this relate to Hyperloop. If you can just kind of give me the connection between vacuum, 
in the Hyperloop tube maybe, or the, yeah. the devices that are used in these yeah. pods? Well, or I think you, you can think of, the, say, the Hyperloop as a big vacuum system, and obviously yep. you don't want to have leaks in the uh, in the vacuum system. Basically, oh, okay. what it is, of course, yep. When, yep. when you have people in a, in a pod, and the vacuum is a, is an, a key element of the, uh, say, the, the total operation of the system, then, yep. then not having leaks is, is quite critical. In a previous conversation, you and I discussed how um, you can really get very precise measurements of, of leaks happening. Um, can you go into that again? Yeah. Well, it, it, it really depends, and that's part of what we were talking about before as far as a, a leak test specification, because people always say, yes, I want to leak test my part, and I can't have any leaks, but actually every part and every component is going to leak. So you have to specify what kind of leakage is, is allowable or tolerable in your in your application. For example, another big market for leak testing is in the pharmaceutical industry or say uh, say a body implanted part like a pacemaker. Of course, you don't want any uh, body fluids getting into the pacemaker and you know getting to the electronics. That's, that's true. So that's, that's kind of interesting. A lot of these technologies can be used in different applications. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what do you like working in this kind of industry that you see different kinds of industries or in your role in particular? I think the biggest thing is just say the diversity and you get to see mm -hmm. a lot of say different applications and access to a lot of companies that normally you yeah. wouldn't get the chance to get into. You know, a lot of mm -hmm. this is, is high tech stuff. You can yeah. also you know get into to, to parts like electronic uh, components. For example, producing an inkjet cartridge or, or a, a hard drive, a pharmaceutical company, military application. So it's it's very very diverse. The biggest things that people struggle with is 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 to set say a leak rate or a standard, and that's something that we actually help a lot of companies with, with as well. One of the things that we have as NOLIC is we say we want to be a, say a partner to companies, and part of that partnership is to try to get involved in the R&D process, say, as, as soon as possible. So if they're prototyping a, uh, a part, if we can actually help them with leak testing, we can help them actually set the uh, the specs and the standards. Obviously, not we're not going to tell them this is what your specs should be, but at least by doing testing, we can help them, you know, develop the guidelines. Mm. Getting in early on the process uh, uh, as kind of a consultant really helps out. <laughs> Co correct. For example, the, the environment, you know, nowadays, many companies oh. are looking at, you know, green technologies are being green and that's actually something that that helps us in in the in the leak testing the tighter the tolerance the better it is for example in the refrigeration industry when you buy a refrigerator it has to last a certain amount of time a certain amount of years of course whatever you know coolant or re refrigerant they put inside the refrigerator that has to be guaranteed for next amount of time can i ask a question on uh working in different companies and you know maybe there are different nationalities in these companies and um kind of in general working different cultures yeah yeah it's actually one of the, the say the, the the parts that's quite interesting. Yeah, I'm actually from Holland myself, and I moved to, to the U.S. Uh, when I was eight. So I've kind of been exposed, and I've moved around, uh, you know, quite a uh, quite a bit as well. So it's actually quite interesting and fascinating to work with people from from different cultures and uh, and a different way how things work. And I would say that's one of the other things that at Nolec, uh, because we do have these. Uh, locations and or manufacturing yeah, locations yeah, and, yeah. And different sites. Mm -hmm. For example, we have a lot of companies that we have deal with, uh, say, the engineering yeah. office here in the U.S., but their manufacturing mm -hmm. location may be in China. So by having uh, our, our office in, in Malaysia, and a lot of the, the people in, uh, in Malaysia are ethnically Chinese, they speak the language and the culture. So a lot of times we'll deal with the engineering level, say, here in, in the U.S., and then when we actually build the system and install the system, that will be done through our office in, in Malaysia where they're in the same time zone and understand the uh, the culture. It's a global industry, and I, I a lot of Hyperloop teams are you know, from all over the world, and some of the student teams uh, at least have different students from all over the world. So it's something that you wouldn't think about, but there is quite a lot of intercultural communication going on. Absolutely. Um, so how can people learn about leak testing, and how would I learn about this industry? That's, a, that's actually a good question, because there is really no leak testing or, say, vacuum school. A lot of it is, is learning by uh, by doing, or as I say, a lot of times learning by suffering. So one of the things is, you know, within uh, within Nolik, we're uh, especially with our office in, in Sweden, where we do a lot of our R and D. We're working together with the universities now as well, trying to to get you know young people into the company, given the exposure, and a lot of it, uh, like I said, is just just learning by doing, and especially you know working on a uh, working on a system. Getting the ideas of what what factors play into it is uh, is quite important. It's good to have exposure as a student into these different industries. Um, it, it helps you stay motivated. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> when you're studying. So for leak testing, this requires a lot of automated, but also some manual data collection. How does all this data flow? With yeah, all this actually leak a, a, a good question. There is actually nowadays a uh, a huge focus on on data collection. 
So we can embed it in, in different ways. Uh, for example, some customers have, uh, say, a product that arrives with a, a barcode. So they can have a barcode reader. Sometimes it's with an RF chip where, where you document information. And one of the neat things we've developed ourselves is a software program called Moscura, which is developed in, uh, in Denmark. We have a separate uh, software group. And one of the neat things about this is, is that you, you're able to connect your, say, your input information and your output. In a normal process, you have a, a PLC where your test parameters are recorded. But say, for example, you have the, the second shift, they have an issue, and one of the oper operator goes in, or one of the maintenance guys, it's normally password protected, but say they go in and, and they change the, the leak rate value for some reason. But it's not documented anywhere, so you test and you test and you test, and maybe months down the line, you go back and say, hey, we have a product recall, we have an issue. So one of the nice things using this Moscura program, it's a, an offline uh, database, is that all your test parameters are recorded within Moscura. It's documented who did it. They have to document why they did it. And that way, once a product is tested, for example, if you also have a serial number, all that information been, can be connected. And say you do have you know, six months down the line, you have a process recall. You can actually go back into the database and punch in the, the serial number. OK, I can see what my input data was and my output data. And you can correlate the two. That's really fascinating. There's a lot of data out there and now that you have software developers uh, creating this mascara that's really helpful for <laughs> all the processes that are happening in that, creating a product. Yes, we actually have another uh, small software program instead of running a, uh, a PLC, because a PLC can be expensive. We also have a, a PC-based uh, program called uh, Tested that does a little bit of data recording, but one of the neat things that you can also is you can document the, the, the building process for example, or testing process. So technically, it would be possible to pull someone off the street, put them in front of the machine, and then by having you know all the the, the, the physical steps that they have to take showing uh, shown on the screen, it's another way to kind of automate and document the process. Fascinating. So Norbert, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to to meet within the Hyperloop. Yes, well, th thank you for having me on. And and how can people learn more about your company, and where's the best place to go? For that. The, the best place is to, to look at our website, which is uh, nolek, N-O-L-E-K.com, or as a lot of people say, noleek.com. Uh, the other, you can also, uh, if you'd like to connect, you can connect with me on, uh, on LinkedIn as well. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. All Have right, thanks. Day.